to bsc statistics students the in this class uh, i explained one of the problem one particular problem for explaining the changes in the coefficient of objective function cj so how uh, the coefficient of uh, variation if it if it changes and uh, how to calculate the uh, variations to maintain the optimality condition you see the problem you can easily understand this is the problem it is given to us the linear programming problem maximize z is equal to 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 5x3 subject to the constraints x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 less than or equal to 430 3x1 plus 2x3 less than or equal to 460 x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal to 420 and x1 x2 x3 greater than or equal to 0 this is the problem it is given to us now obtain variations in cj j is equal to 1 to 3 which are permitted without changing the optimality solution optimum solution this is what we have to study for which uh, what we have to do is this is a uh, this is an as usual simplex uh, uh, problem by applying simplex procedure you can easily solve this lpp in this uh, what we have to consider is, that is uh, we have to obtain the variations in cj that is uh, what are cj c1 c2 c3 c1 x1 plus c2 x2 plus c3 x3 as usual if you if you recollect it c1 is 3 c2 is 2 c3 is 5 which are nothing but cj there are three uh, cost coefficients in the objective function so this is you have to solve as usual simplex procedure because of all less than or equal to constraints therefore otherwise you solve by using big gum procedure uh, for example uh, greater than or equal to constant or equal to constant 10 volts then you solve by using big gum or two phase that is uh, solution of the linear programming problem do not change it is as usual we have to obtain the solution by introducing certain slack variables here x4 x5 x6 greater than or equal to 0 and then by solving by using simplex procedure we got the solution you have to remember this you have to solve as usual sim by using as usual simplex procedure and you have to obtain the final optimum simplex table this is the final optimum simplex table you see the net evaluations are greater than equal to 0 we have we got z is equal to 1350 1350 and uh, y2 y3 y6 are in the basis so x2 x3 values are uh, obtained and of course x6 uh, leave it and uh, now the discussion is uh, the optimality condition of LPP and the coefficient of the objective function CJ uh, that some particular variations are going to be considered and without changing the optimality of the condition of the given LPP is going to be calculated. That is what we have to calculate. How many coefficients? There are three C1, C2, C3. Hence, we have to see the changes one by one. First of all, variations in C1 what is c1 first you say c1 is already i have explained discussed that it is 3 c1 c2 c3 c1 3 c2 2 c3 5 so therefore you start here variations in c1 now we have to see whether c1 belongs to the basis or not that is what we have to see first you see c1 means corresponding y1 corresponding vector is y1 y1 is not in the basis therefore c1 does not belongs to CB first. You see here, this is what the uh, matter we are considering. Since C1 not belongs to CB, we have to check first of all whether C1 belongs to CB or not belongs to CB. There are two cases we have studied already. I explained very clearly. So C1 does not not belongs to CB. Therefore, the change of delta C1. What we have considered the change of C1, C1 plus delta C1, in which uh, uh, we have obtained a, obtained a condition for delta C1. Delta C1 condition, what is the condition of delta CK? It is less than or equal to ZK minus CK in this case uh, to maintain the optimality, right? So, therefore, it is very, very simple. Delta C1 is less than or equal to Z1 minus C1. What is Z1 minus C1? Net evaluation of first one. It is 4. You see, I show you it, uh, show it very clearly. This is vector Y1. The corresponding z1 net evaluation is z1 minus c1 is 4 
clear so therefore delta delta c1 is less than or equal to 4 so a condition is so simple to calculate right but after that what you have to calculate you have to calculate the range of c1 it was not specified in the theory but it is very simple it is very simple uh, to calculate uh, the range of c1 which is not uh, uh, just by taking the formula this is by taking just common sense right you see the is obtain maintaining maintaining the optimality condition the range of c1 to obtain the to maintain the optimality condition how to calculate c1 is less than or equal to c1 plus delta c1 it is obvious x is less than or equal to x plus 2 or x plus something the value positive value so therefore it is simple c1 plus c1 is less than or equal to c1 plus delta c1 so lower lower uh, limit is i am considering minus infinity minus infinity less than or equal to c1 less than or equal to c1 plus delta c1 now c1 is 3 delta c1 is 4 delta c1 is less than or equal to 4 therefore i am using 4 here therefore c1 is less than or equal to 7 the range is minus infinity less than or equal to c1 less than or equal to c1 that's all it's very simple now we have to consider we have to go for calculation of variations in c2 now you see what are variations in c2 how to calculate the variations in c2 again we have to see whether it is belongs to cb or not belongs to cb we have already seen that c2 and c3 and that is y2 and y3 are belongs to the basis you see here first of all in this particular final optimum simplex table y2 y3 which are corresponding to x2 x3 so therefore the cost corresponding to x2 x3 are c2 c3 therefore uh, c2 belongs to uh, cb that is that is what we have observed the first and then the range of delta c2 for maintaining the optimality condition is given by for which if ck belongs to cb then the condition is maximum of condition for delta ck it is uh, for maintaining the optimality if condition is maximize uh, maximum of uh, minus zj minus cj by ykj where ykj greater than 0 less than or equal to delta ck less than or equal to minimum of minus zj minus cj by ykj ykj less than 0 this is what the condition in which uh, Delta uh, here uh, C2 because of you are calculating C2 we are consider delta C2 that is okay. What about Y1J? Y1J because y are, why we are considering Y1J here? Y1J is considered since the variable X2 at first row of this simplex table. I show it to you. I show it. You see the Y2 that is uh, this is corresponding to this is the first row. Oh, in, the, in which the first row we have y2 okay so this is what the first row and y1 is here this is the first column is going to be represented by y1 that is what we know right in which uh, we have to consider y1j that is what uh, we, have, we have consider because of the corresponding uh, variable x2 corresponding variable x2 as the first row i show it again the corresponding variable is x2 corresponding variable is x2 because c2 x2 which in which particular uh, uh, vector uh, this particular value will be that is corresponding to x2 because c2 is corresponding c2 multiplied by x2 c2 is the value corresponding to x2 coefficient of the cost function corresponding to x2 the uh, corresponding to x2 that is corresponding to the va variable x2 the vector is y2 which is in the first row that that is the reason why we are considering y1j clear if you understand this you can easily do the remaining problem divide minus maximum of minus zj minus cj divided by ykj here the k we have to consider one because of the first row that is what our intention okay nothing else y1j we are considering because of the corresponding variable x2 x2 where you have in the in the simplex table that is in the first position of the uh, matrix first row first row of the simplex table therefore we are considering y1j that is only the leading uh, um, topic therefore maximum of 
what are the values of you see y1 j greater than 0 what are the values of y1 j greater than 0 you have to consider for which uh, z j minus of z j minus c j divided by y, y1 j y1 j is greater than 0 i show it in the table that is we have to consider the values corresponding to the y1 j greater than 0 what are y1 j so these are the values of y1 j from here to here the values of y1 j minus 1 by 4 1 0 1 by 2 minus 1 by 4 0 among which what are greater than 0 values greater than 0 are strictly 1 and 1 by 2 1 and 1 by 2 the corresponding net evaluations are 0 and 1 therefore 0 by minus 0 by 1 minus 1 by 1 by 2 I will show here the maximum of now is it clear maximum of 0 by 1 of course minus 0 by 1 it is also 0 by 1 and minus 1 by 1 by 2 because you have minus of zj minus cj clear 0 by 1 minus 1 by 1 by 2 less than or equal to delta c2 and what is the second one y1j less than 0 we have to consider for which y1j is less than 0 and which means negative which means negative you see what are the y1j values which are negative it is minus 1 by 4 minus 1 by 4 corresponding to that net evaluations are 4 and 2 that is minus 4 by minus 1 by 4 minus 2 by minus 1 by 4 minus zj minus cj divided by uh, net evaluations divided by uh, y1j y1j less than 0 therefore it is uh, minus minimum of minus 4 by minus 1 by 4 minus comma minus 2 by minus 1 by 4 therefore these are the values which are required here so from among which you have to consider maximum among which you have to consider minimum so maximum value here because the negative value hence it is the maximum is 0 here if you calculate this this is 16 4 by 1 by 4 4 4 are 16 minus 2 by minus 1 by 4 minus will cancel and here also minus will cancel positive value 4 2s are 8 8 and 16 the minimum value is 8 so therefore 0 less than equal to delta c2 less than equal to 8 because uh, now you see delta c2 range is 0 to 8 now we can calculate the range of this c2 by taking uh, c2 is less than equal to c2 plus delta c2 where c2 is equal to 2 already i have shown you the value of c2 in the problem it is uh, 2 into x2 therefore c2 is equal to 2 clear so therefore come over here again and uh, now calculate the range of c2 for maintaining the optimality condition for the variations in c2 just now explained just not stop with delta c2 delta c2 is one such range you have to calculate by using the formula and again just by using common sense then c2 the range of c2 is going to be calculated c2 is less than or equal to c2 plus delta c2 use this and so that uh, if you add c2 here that is very simple just uh, you add c2 here for this uh, uh, equation 0 less than or equal to delta c2 less than or equal to 8 you add simply what is c2 2 you add 2 to add for the entire equation 2 plus 0 2 plus delta c2 that is c2 plus uh, c2 plus delta 2 plus uh, delta c2 or you can consider c2 plus delta c2 it is nothing but c2 and less than or equal to 2 plus 8 so therefore 2 plus 8 is 10 and the 2 plus 0 is 2 2 is less than or equal to c2 less than or equal to 10 that is nothing but uh, the range of c2 the range of c2 after calculating the after calculating the range of delta c2 you have to also calculate the range of c2 that's all therefore variations in c2 c2 must be licensed between 2 to 10 so that optimality will not change optimality condition will not change for the new lpp right similarly we can calculate variations in c3 variation c c3 first of all you see whether c3 belongs to cb or not belongs to cb already we have uh, uh, we have seen clearly c3 corresponding to c3 the y3 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 is in the basis therefore c3 belongs to cb after c3 still belongs to cb then uh, we have to we have considered maximum of uh, uh, the the range of the delta c3 it is going to be calculated uh, uh, for maintaining the optimality the condition the maximum of minus zj minus cj by y2j that is ykj we see whether it is second vector or third vector or fourth vector there are three vectors one two three which vector 
Y2, is a, YK is a, YK is a greater than 0, less than equal to delta C3, this is delta CK, because it is delta C3, less than equal to minimum of minus HJ minus CJ by Y2, is a, Y2 is a less than 0, that is YK is a, YK is a less than 0. For which we have to see, since Y2G is, Y2J is considered, since the variable X3, it has the second row of the simplex table, that you see, we will see and confirm. Do you see here Y3, Y3 in the second row. Y3 is in the second row. Therefore, we have to consider as Y2j, all the elements of Y2j, that is 3 by 2 to 0, all the elements you have to consider. And for which Y2j greater than 0, I am considering, first of all, the formula. You see the formula, I show you. Maximum of minus Zj minus Cj divided by Ykj, Ykj greater than 0. That is Y2j here. Y2j greater than 0, which means you see the value here y2j in the second row which are the elements are greater than 0 positive only 3 by 2 1 1 by 2 you see 3 by 2 1 1 by 2 all three values are positive remaining zeros leave it no negative value okay then you have to consider net evaluation corresponding to that 4 uh, and this is 0 and this is 2 4 by 3 by 2 0 by 1 2 by 1 by 2 for which you have to consider the maximum that is 4 means minus 4 we have to consider because uh, minus zj minus cj you come over here maximum of minus 4 by 3 by 2 0 by 1 minus 2 by 1 by 2 these two are negative maximum value is 0 by 1 hence it is 0 right so therefore less than or equal to delta c3 is less than infinity right hence it is uh, c3 and now now what you have to consider just by using that uh, you have to calculate what is the range of C3. Delta C3 range is 0 to infinity. Since C3 is less than or equal to C3 plus delta C3 where C3 is equal to 5. Already I have shown that uh, uh, C3 x3 multiplied by 5, 5 x3 therefore C3 is equal to 5 right. And then um, now again come back here. You see the range of uh, C3, C3 is less than or equal to C3 plus delta C3 and C3 is 5. Therefore, range of C3 for maintaining the optimality condition, if it is going to be calculated by add uh, 5 here, 5 plus 0 and C3, C3 plus delta C3, C3 less than or equal to, C3 is less than or equal to C3 plus delta C3. Therefore, we are considering C3, C3 is less than infinity, infinity if you add 5 to infinity, infinity. So, therefore, 5 is less than or equal to C3 less than infinity. The range of C3 must be greater than 3. 3 to 5, greater than 5, I am sorry. C3 must be greater than 5, 5 to infinity the range. So, this is what the range you have to calculate by using the uh, optimality condition. So, to maintain the optimality condition, the range of C3 is going to be calculated in this fashion. So, this is what the two particular cases uh, we have to do. In which particular way you have to do the the uh, variations in C1, C2 and C3, for what variations of C1, C2, C3, we can maintain the optimality condition of new linear programming problem after, sol after solving the optimum solution, after obtaining the optimum solution. Once the optimum solution is obtained, how to maintain the optimality uh, for the variations in C1, C2, C3, we have calculated in this problem. Thank you. Hope you understand. Thank you. Thank you very much.